my privilege to be a producer on this one. Um, I, I was invited in by Gabrielle Union and Kathy Shulman, and I was just over there taking a photo with our Amazon executives led by Jen Salty, and it was just, I would just feel what happens when women reach out to each other and when... Uh, and of course, Michael Schumwalt's our director. I don't want to leave men out, but but especially when women say, you know what, your story matters to me, uh, and, and then you hear that in return, you're able to do tremendous things, more than you ever thought possible. And so it's important to me to have a voice in that because even though it's just mine, my perspective matters to me. Glenn Marshall, my character, she, she's really content in her life. She's really fulfilled by her work. She's an amazing daughter. She loves being a mom. She's a wonderful friend. And, yeah, like, love would be nice, but it doesn't feel like it's the most essential. It doesn't feel like something essential is missing in her life. So she wasn't expecting what happens next, which is she falls in love with someone who happens to be probably the most famous pop star in a boy band in the world. I just wanted, just last thing, I'm, the early part of my career I made a lot of feel-good movies and we said this was a feel-everything movie. I feel like it's a, it's a childhood uh, fantasy of, of any young man to be part of a boy band, but um, I, I think it helps when there was an amazing script um, and, and Michael Showalter and, and, and Hathaway were, were attached to the project and um, I knew immediately that it was a really interesting take on, on the, sort of the rom-com genre and so it, it was kind of a no-brainer for me. It was crazy. I mean, it was a lot of fun, but you know, I, I certainly felt out of my depth to begin with, and um, you know, it, it didn't it didn't half out that I had four amazing professional dancers as, as my other bandmates, and so I just told them to, to try and not make me look uh, terrible. But um, Danny spent lots of lots of hours really trying to get me into my body and feel very grounded in it. So I'm, I'm very appreciative of that. It's such a hard job, I think, to be able to command an audience. Um, you know, stamina to be able to, to do it. We, we, we shot these scenes at Coachella for hours and hours into the morning in Atlanta. And so, um, yeah, I have a huge amount of respect. I'd like to think it's because, you know, there's a, there's a genuine friendship between Annie and I. And, um, you know, she was very open to me and, and, and made herself very accessible to me, which I really appreciated. And, you know, we had this amazing chemistry test. So by day one, we kind of already felt a little bit bonded anyway. Um, She's a wonderful person and obviously a wonderful actor as well. I signed on for not a bunch of reasons really, but I mean, Michael Showalter, Anne Hathaway, and a fantastic script. And that's really, that's kind of all the convincing I needed. Uh, my character plays Annie's ex-husband, who sort of plays the, the major obstacle between uh, her and her, her new love interest, Nick Gallatson. Uh, he's, a, he's a hypocritical guy, to say the least. Um, I, I seem to be uh, carving out a nice little niche playing these kind of guys, but it's, it's a lot of fun and I, I, I take these roles really seriously and I, I, I love how Michael really gave us all the opportunity to just find an honesty to all of our characters and let them be real flesh and blood people, not just caricatures on a page and that's, that's all you can really hope for. A, I, I hope they realize that the rom-com is really back. And I think it's a genre that has been sorely missed, and I think it's going to lead to a lot of opportunities for a lot of really amazing artists and a lot of talent to, you know, play in this genre space. Um, and I hope it's just fun. I mean, this is the kind of, the reaction that this movie got at South by was just it, it was overwhelming. I mean, this, this is the kind of movie that you want to watch with friends, and that's what I'm hoping people do. I think they had gotten almost sort of stamped out by like a machine at a certain point. We were sort of, you know, coming up with rom-coms based on song titles. So it's like, oh, we got the song, we got the title, we might as well make a movie around it. And I think this movie sort of does the opposite. It goes back to more of like the Nora Ephron days, which is come up with very compelling story, really compelling, very honest, authentic characters, and let the audience just go on the ride. And that's, that's what this movie does. I was the first one in. My girlfriend, Robin Lee, who is the author of The Idea of You, uh, the one that started it all, we've been like best friends for a billion years. She played my sister, one of my sisters, in Deliver Us From Eva 20 some odd years ago, and we bonded over our love of boy bands. Um, she was heavy, 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 like fan, fan club type of thing uh, with New Kids on the Block. I was all in on um, New Edition, and that's how we bonded. So we've been loving boy bands for a lot longer than, than the movie. So when she wrote this book, and you know, we were able to read early drafts and whatnot and give notes. Um, I was like, I want to produce this. This is a movie. And she was like, I'm gonna trust you. I think you could. I think you can do it. 
So we were all through the audition process. They had to sing, dance, act, the whole thing. Um, so the audition process alone was uh, hard. You have to put together a whole boy band, and it has to be very realistic. So that alone was a challenge, uh, but we got the, the best. Uh, yeah, it's... Um, they, I think they did a great job. Like, I, and I think they have music out. Like, no, they do have music out, like, that you can stream, because they're that good. Hope, because I think there are a lot of us that are just hopeless. That um, even, even when you're married sometimes, as you get older, you just kind of become a mom, or a wife, or an employee, or the lady on the street. And you kind of feel like you are in, like, becoming invisible, like you're disappearing as you age. And I, I hope people feel seen. You know, they have the hope that you are seen and there's plenty of people out there that will see you. Um, doesn't matter what shape they come in and age, perhaps, uh, as adults. Um, but yeah, there is that there is hope and that, you know, people do see us. I'm just fascinated by these characters. I'm just so intrigued by these characters and this world and, of course, the opportunity to work with Anne and Nick. We had such a great time making this movie. We worked hard, um, but we really had a great time. It was, it was a great experience. I was very into New Edition. Okay. Candy girl. <laughs> oh, my world. Um, that was kind of my, my era. I played Georgia in The Idea of You, and she's super fun. It's a super fun movie, and um, I really wanted to do this because I knew it was, I love Michael Showalter and just like I thought it was, it was a super like collaborative and like just really fun set, not fun but you know like hi, like everyone was just excited to be there, I was super excited to be there. My favorite memory on set would definitely have to be um, the Coachella scene, it was super fun, they built a whole set and um, yeah it was just insane. I was really excited to sign on to this project because one, Anne is just like a master class in acting and I knew that watching her and being around her would really help me as an actor and like learn how to really learn from someone like her. And also the movie itself is about just love and I thought that was really, really cool and going to Coachella, she takes me to Coachella in the movie, I play Zeke. Um, Zeke is her daughter's best friend in the movie and I just had a really great time working on the set with her and working on the set with everyone. So that's why I was excited to do the project. Yes, I am a big fan of August Moon, who, who isn't, like, I'm just playing, but um, some of my favorite songs from the movie are, I think, Guard Down. I love Guard Down. They perform that at Coachella when um, Selene takes the kids to go and see Coachella, to go see the boys. My favorite memory on set was actually my birthday party. We had all went out to karaoke, and we all went and we all sang songs, sang like Whitney Houston and sang like all these songs, and it was so much fun to be around everyone and to just sing and have fun. So I sang I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston, which like, come on, iconic song. And uh, actually, Nick was sick that day, so he didn't sing at the specific night that we all sang together, but he sang in spirit. My character's Izzy, she's Solen's daughter, and um, she's just this very independent, sort of spunky, smart, loving uh, 16, 17 year old. And um, I think I wanted, to, I mean, it's so funny why I wanted to sign. It's like, why would I, if I want to sign on for every single reason. For Michael Showalter, who's one of my comedy heroes growing up, for to get to work with Annie, such an honor. I, I've, I've, me and everybody else loved her work forever, and I respect her so much as a person and an actor. So I think it was just like a real, for them to let me do it was a, a real dream. On the very first day we shot, Annie and I sang a song in the car, and we just kind of like rocked out, and it was really surreal and fun, and she loosened me up in a, in a great way, so, yeah. When I read the book, I was captivated by the notion that I was still bumping against the notion that there is a double standard between men and women, like where the men can be older and the women can be, and have to, can be younger, but the women can't be older with a younger man. And I thought, we've really got to do this again and again and again until this stops being such a social problem. And I really love this story and I love that the character that Anne Hathaway plays that she would be choosing between different kinds of happiness, not between men, which I thought was kind of fun.
You know, I think it was really fun to build a boy band. I had never done something like that before. And to really have the challenge to convince people that they could be the biggest band in the world and to go through the process of, you know, um, the music writing and the choreography and all that, that was a real challenge. And I just loved shooting in, in Atlanta. And it was the whole process was really good. This was a great cast, a great crew, and we really loved working together. It was a real communal effort. I think that it was so much about the character for me that I also am a single mom in Silver Lake and 40-ish, so seeing a woman that had such a full life get to have this very wish fulfillment story was something that felt really undeniable for me. I mean, it felt so natural and authentic, and I think that Anne had such you know, a clear idea of who Hayes was as well as Solen. And so when Nick walked into the room, it just, Hayes appeared. And it was natural from then. No one had to do anything to make that chemistry. It was just there. I think that I hope people take away watching movies about 40-year-old moms going through life and having coming-of-age stories is something that we should see more of. It's really exciting to watch someone who knows who they are go on this journey. It was really fun to be able to play Anne's ex-husband's new <laughs> very annoying girlfriend. Um, I love, like, it was fun to be the villain, kind of, um, and obviously just getting to work with her is like a dream, so. It was actually really cool to see them filming those scenes on the stage, like at Coachella, and I mean, I, I fell in love with all of them, so I'm sure every girl's going to fall in love with them like I did. I think it was really just fun to, like, get dressed up, and um, I've actually never gotten to go to Coachella myself, so this was the closest um, I ever got, was getting to um, dress up to go, so. I do love that we're, like, painting women in a little bit. Like, I, I love the idea that they're... Anne is doing us, I think, all a big favor by, like embracing the fact that she can still be the like lead it girl even though she's not 22 anymore like I, I I'm very thankful for that even for me in my own career so I think a lot of women are going to appreciate like she's just so beautiful and it's just so classy and like she gets the guy and he's obsessed with her and it's like I don't know it makes you feel good it makes especially women I'm buzzing, you know, it's it's a project that we worked on uh, over a year ago and, and now releasing it to the world is very exciting. We worked really hard, uh, had a lot of fun, and now the world gets to have fun with us. You know? I wanted to sign on because I needed a job. Uh, and then on top of that, it's Anne Hathaway, Nicholas Gowitson, you know, there's there's not too many red flags. It's, it's kind of like a no-brainer. Um, I play Oliver Hoyt Knight, he's a part of Ox Moon, and uh, he kind of throws a wrench into their party. I was stuck in a room listening to it all the time, so it was kind of like uh, my own score in, in life uh, for, for a few months. And uh, yeah, the music is amazing. I think the, the fans are, are loving it as well, which is, which is awesome. And uh, now they get to see some performances with it. I was inspired by a, a bunch of different things. I think it was the idea of turning 40 in Hollywood. I'm an actress and I've been doing it for a while and seeing all my kind of the opportunities diminish and the idea that Hollywood thinks that women over a certain age are a loser value and their desirability and wanting to rail against that and coming up with this idea of a woman who was kind of like taking, you know, this opportunity to like explore her sexuality and redefine herself and so through, it's, it's all kind of a, a love story, this sexual awakening with this much younger guy who happens to be in a boy band and who is incredibly famous and so I wanted to kind of like show that and that was, that was, that was it. It's always very interesting. It's, 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 it's a little uh, surreal. I was, that's like my word for the, the month, I think. It's, everything happening is, is kind of crazy right now. And it's just, I think it's magical. I think when you sit down, you know, you're writing alone in your home or Starbucks or whatever, and it's just you and your laptop, and you're imagining these characters and this story and this location and this like intense love. And you don't ever imagine it's going to be something like this. Like it, it's, it's kind of incredible to see these actors give voice to these characters, and it just, it's just, it's, it's, it's surreal. I just love um, rom-coms. I've all, like my whole career, a lot of my biggest songs have been inspired by rom-coms, so it's amazing to be a part of one. The love story was really beautiful, and Hayes is, 
Hayes Campbell's journey in the movie was something that um, I've been close to in my career a few times. So there was a lot of inspiration there. And it took about like four months to four or five months to come up with the songs. So yeah. Nick, Nick is amazing. Nick is such a multi-talent. It was such a pleasure to record him and write for his voice.